this week on Hokit News, the Akara U400 Smart Lock with Ultra Wideband, Matter and Thread. Welcome back everybody. Today we're looking at Akara's latest smart deadbolt lock, which on the surface doesn't seem that special, but really is. This is the Smart Lock U400, and what makes it special is this little symbol here indicating ultra wideband support. We'll come back to that shortly, but the U400 is BHMA Grade 3 certified, is Matter compatible using Thread, and is of course compatible with Apple Home, Amazon, Samsung SmartThings, Home Assistant, and Google Home. This is the company's third deadbolt lock after their rather successful U100, which offers many of the same features, including a fingerprint reader and Apple Home key, although it uses Bluetooth. This was followed by the U50, which essentially is the same as the U100 without the fingerprint reader and still uses Bluetooth. I'm actually still using Akara's A100 Zigbee for our front door, which was the world's first lock of any kind with Apple Home Key. And internally, I also have the Akara U200, a retrofit option with a separate keypad. Let's look at some of the features of the U400 now, starting with ultra wideband. And to be clear, this is not a Lero certified as such. It does only seem to work in tandem with Apple Home Key, but it's a great feature nonetheless. This lock uses master over thread, which means faster response times and local connectivity. It also features a rechargeable battery, which is something first offered with the U200. It's IP65 rated for outdoor use, and as already mentioned, it's BHMA certified. It has a fingerprint reader, although why it's advanced beyond maybe being better all round, I'm not sure. And finally, it has auto lock without the need for a separate sensor. Let's now have a look at what's in the box, starting with the installation manual and a guide for cutting the relevant holes if needed. Standard screws and bolts are included for the installation, of course, and a rechargeable battery for the lock, which sits inside the internal assembly. This part also contains the Mata and Akara QR codes. You also get a pair of standard keys, although you're unlikely to use them. And then there's the newly designed outer assembly, still with the fingerprint sensor, a keypad that isn't visible when off, and the hidden keyhole underneath the sliding shutter. The back is home to the standard data cable, of course, but there's also an additional cable that I assume is for connecting to the external USB-C port to the internal battery. This is the USB-C port alongside a small speaker grill, which you also see on the inner assembly, which works with the battery. One new feature is that the outer assembly comes with an adapter that allows the lock to fit doors with a crossbore of either 54mm or 38mm. I've now installed the lock in Apple Home and interestingly the first thing to greet me was an available update directly in the app. For some reason it took forever to do anything so in the end I updated via the Akara app which is what I'd advise you to do for the time being. So you get the standard single tile for the lock along with battery levels and charging state and the manage access feature all in the settings section and as this is a matte device you also get to add it to other ecosystems from here. What is totally new though is an option labelled approach direction which relates directly to ultra wideband. Here you get the option to select when the lock reacts to the signal from your phone left or right with front being turned on permanently by default. This is going to be helpful for people that live in apartments, for example, or maybe have their main door at the side of the house, down a side alley, for example. Other than that, there is nothing out of the ordinary, and as you can see, I've also already added it to Akara Home. So let's now take a look at the new ultra wideband feature itself. So if you're not already familiar with it, the chip for this technology is present in some iPhone models, starting from the iPhone 11 series and series six or later of the Apple Watch, and is also in use with Apple's AirTag, which allows for precise locationing and positioning. This is now the case with the U400, so it'll be able to detect how close you are to the door via your iPhone or watch. I've installed the U400 in a door, but before I did, I set it up temporarily to better test out this feature. So as I approach the lock, you see the ultra wideband icon turn on with the U400 unlocking itself all hands free. What's also interesting is that it won't accidentally unlock from the inside as it detects you're positioned on the inside of the lock. Very cool. 
I'll now approach from the side and you can see it'll unlock before I'm stood in front of the door. I'll approach from the other side now, but in this case I turned off the side approach function, so I do need to get closer, but it's still hands free. The U400 offers a variety of unlock methods, starting with passcodes in either Acara or Apple Home, which can be 6 to 10 digits long. Apple Home Key is also supported, of course, and will work on Apple Watch too. For many, the most convenient option is going to be the fingerprint sensor. For some members of the family, there's still the option to use physical keys if they prefer as a last resort. NFC is also supported either via Acara or standard MyFair M1 cards. You can control the lock from within Apple Home or even use Siri. And of course there's Ultra Wideband, which is going to be the preferred method for many going forward. Auto Lock seems to work well considering there's no external sensor, and I have it set here to lock instantly, but you can set it to wait for a maximum of 10 minutes if you wish. If you prefer not to use Auto Lock, the keypad will display a lock and a back icon to remind you to lock the door. This next feature may or may not be new, but normally when tapping on the keyboard, each tap makes a sound of course, but if you long press any of the digits, then tap in your passcode, the sounds will be muted before reverting back to normal once the door is opened. The overall design of the U400 hasn't changed much, but it does come with these rounder corners, which is really evident when you place it next to this U50 that it's replaced in my home. I do like the minimalistic design of the U50, but the new design does look more modern. Let's have a look at the inner assembly now, and whilst the thumb turn hasn't really changed, you no longer have to remove it. Additionally, the battery cover is a lot easier to remove compared to the U50 and the U100. The inside of the cover has a QR code to download the manual, and the main body has the buttons and QR codes you need for setup. One thing to note is that whilst the battery has a USB-C port to charge it, charging whilst it's seated inside the compartment won't show the charging status in Apple Home. The manual states that this is an action button capable of triggering a scene or automation, but I couldn't find any option in the Acara app for it, which is very strange. You can add the U400 to Acara Home without a Matter controller in Acara, like the M3, but you'll only be able to change settings once connected via Bluetooth. In fact, even though I've got it connected to a Matter controller, when you're in range of the lock, it still uses Bluetooth. Many of the settings here will be familiar to you if you've already owned an Acara lock, like Night Latch Mode, which first appeared on the U200. Two specific features for the U400 relate to ultra wideband. One is for homes with double doors, which enhances the efficiency of the UWB signal. The other is, as we've seen in Apple Home, that allows you to set the approach direction. That's about it for the Acara app in terms of features, but I do recommend you set this up in Acara, even if you don't have an Acara Mat controller. Onto the pros and cons now, starting unsurprisingly with Ultra Wideband. And whilst Auto Unlock as a feature has been around for a while, Ultra Wideband makes it a lot more accurate. Matter Over Thread is a strong second plus here, and as this is their third Matter Smart Lock, it's fair to say this is the direction for all smart locks going forward, in my opinion. The Crossbore adapter is a new addition and is going to be of use to some people who may use this with internal doors, I'm sure. The improved design gets my vote, even though I do like the design of both the U50 and the U100, but with the invisible keypad, it just looks very slick. I wasn't a fan of the battery cover on Acara's deadbolt locks prior to the U400, so I'm really glad that they've addressed this issue finally. And last of all, to the battery, which whilst not a con as such, does make me wary that replacement batteries might be hard to source, so I'm hoping my concern is misplaced. So that's our brief look at the Acara Smartlock U400. Is ultra wideband the one thing you've been waiting for, or is tapping the lock with Apple Home Key on your phone still more than enough? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and remember if you've got any questions on this or any of my other videos, ask away and I'll always reply. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, show some love by giving it a like, share if you can, and do subscribe if you haven't done so already. It just remains for me to leave you with a more sombre but very pertinent quote this time from the French philosopher Voltaire.